What's up everybody? It's your pop boy putting that work in. Hope all y'all are doing well. And you know what? If you're doing better after this video than you were before it, then make sure to pop the like button. Okay? And that's how that works. But anyway, I'm here to bring you guys something more on an individual basis this time. But as you know, we've been on the gameplay sliders this year, and you probably remember this video right here. But this is the one where we fix the sliders to help stop the ball handler from running into invisible walls, getting sucked back into defenders, uh, you know, just feeling like the ball handler is stuck in quicksand. So that's where we took care of all that. Still going well, still getting really great results. I uh, appreciate all the great feedback from you guys on that one. But of course we know these sliders don't exist in every mode. So in these other modes, we're just left with the default sliders. Can't change them. So we gotta find other ways to deal with these same problems. But we've all felt this, right? The, the, the pick and roll quicksand where you feel like you just simply cannot move very well. Definitely not as well as you normally do at other times. <laughs> you just get absolutely stonewalled by the defender. I mean, it's just crazy. It's just way, way, way too overpowered in favor of the on-ball defender. Now, I'm sure it's something they overcorrected from previous year where it was too easy to, to abuse the pick and rolls. But damn, they... God, man... They, they, they went way overboard this year. I mean, a lot of times you, can, you can't even really get started to try to start running the pick and roll. You're just stuck there, just, just drowning and stumbling, and you can't even pass because you're bobbling the damn... You, you can't do shit. You just have to sit there and watch him drown. Want to watch him die a slow death. <laughs> Um, but what's even worse is when you actually do a good job and create a little bit of a lane there for yourself, you, you still can't really go. You still feel like you're running into something, and we know that's that invisible wall effect coming into play again. And then, of course, the worst thing about this whole scenario is the defender's ability to suck you back into him. I look at this. I'm jamming the shit out of the turbo button, trying to go away from him, and... This is what happens. But anyway, I stumbled upon kind of a weird little trick, I guess, something you can do. And it's actually a pretty simple strategy, a pretty simple move, okay? But what it does is it triggers kind of a cheesy, glitchy reaction from the on-ball defender, okay? So all you want to do here, call for the screen, and the timing is a critical element here, so we'll get into that in a sec. But you're just going to want to hold down turbo and then flick your R stick down. You're just going to hop back. That's it. I mean, to be honest, now that I say it out loud, um, it seems kind of dumb because <laughs> it's just so simple. But you're, you're seeing what it does here. Look at the defender. Look, look at how the CPU reacts to this. I mean, it's almost like I threw like little explosives at his feet or something. Like he just like gets kind of blasted backwards. A lot of times he'll hop backwards like this before I even do the move. And you can see when I slow it down, my player hasn't even started to do the move yet. He's already way the hell back there. So, I don't know. I mean, we're really just fighting bullshit with bullshit at this point, but eh, whatever, if, they, if that's what we got to do. And of course, it's not going to work 100% of the time. You're not going to get that reaction every single time. But it's mostly about timing. We just want to make sure to time it up like you see I'm doing right here. I'm just pressing to do the move here before the screener gets set, uh, like while he's on his way up to come set the screen. And also we want to try to make sure we have at least a little bit of space between the ball handler and the on-ball defender. It just cuts down on the success rate if he's already smothering you. Okay, however, if he is playing you pretty tight like this, it does, I definitely found that it does help to just give him one quick little dribble move and then do the hop back. That'll raise the likelihood that you'll get that same reaction from him, even if he does start off playing you kind of tight. So creating all that space there gives you more room to operate. It kind of leaves the on-ball defender a little disoriented. Uh, he doesn't do as good a job defending the pick and roll once he gets hit with this and it triggers that reaction. So all this is going to really cut down on the whole quicksand feeling, the invisible wall effect. Certainly going to reduce his ability to use his magical powers and suck you back into him. You, you just have some damn room to breathe when you hit him with this shit. 
So give this thing a shot in your next game. And I want to hear how it's going for you guys in the comments, okay? And of course, let me know if you have any questions. But unfortunately, I'm going to keep struggling with the default gameplay in my career. So I'm, I'm sure I'll have more videos like this to come. All right, but we're going to get back on the gameplay sliders for the next video. Okay, and then we'll get back on the defensive settings after that. Okay, and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. Turn your notifications on once you do that. And make sure you don't miss anything. But I want to thank all y'all for watching. And I'm going to see you guys, you know, right back here next time on 2K with the pop. It almost sounds like some sort of prehistoric bird or something.